The sci-fi TV series Halo, based on the eponymous game, has premiered its second season. On the sacred ground of the Branta Galaxy, Silver Team, led by Master Chief, is on a vigilance mission for the Shepard Team. Unfortunately, during their patrol, they receive distressing news that a Covenant destroyer will arrive in an hour. Adding to the urgency, Shepard Team B, positioned at a vantage point, loses contact. With evacuation imminent, Master Chief ascends the mountains alone to search for the missing members of Team B. Upon entering the fog-shrouded summit area, communication signals become intermittent. As Master Chief delves deeper, although he successfully locates some members of Team B, communication is completely severed. The individuals he finds are only part of the communication group, and the whereabouts of the rest of Team B remain unknown. Continuing the search with the gathered members, Master Chief suddenly faces an enemy ambush. Members of the communication group succumb one after another to unforeseen events, and Master Chief realizes the identity of the enemy. The unpleasant odor confirms that the damned Covenant has long been lurking here. In this crucial moment, Master Chief unleashes his firepower, becoming a relentless force, a god of war, and a slayer of demons. By the way, if you enjoy our movie recaps, we're currently hosting a giveaway for our audience. We're excited to announce that a brand new scooter awaits one lucky subscriber. Don't miss out. Subscribe and follow us to stay tuned for more updates. Having annihilated the immediate enemies, Master Chief begins searching for survivors. Unfortunately, the entire communication group has only one surviving soldier named Perez. Master Chief plans to lead the team downhill, but more enemies have surrounded them. In the tense atmosphere reaching its breaking point, the enemies suddenly withdraw. In the thick fog, Master Chief catches a glimpse of a familiar figure disappearing. Simultaneously, Covenant warships initiate ground strikes, turning everything before them into scorched earth. However, the native shaman among the indigenous people refuses to leave. Leading the believers, she walks towards death step by step. In a fleeting encounter with Master Chief, she advises him to seek his own faith, as the Chief's death is imminent. In the subsequent debriefing, Master Chief emphasizes the Covenant's prior infiltration, suspecting an unknown conspiracy. However, the Oni Director dismisses Master Chief's analysis. Just then, a man named Erickson interrupts the briefing, revealing himself as the heart of the Spartan warriors and responsible for the mission. Simultaneously, Master Chief learns from Erickson that Dr. Halsey is still alive. Erickson quickly meets Master Chief privately, and despite his initial skepticism about the new leader, he acknowledges Erickson's combat experience, having been on the battlefield. The conversation hints that the AI Cortana has been extracted from Master Chief. In fact, Erickson talks individually with each member of the team, and the results indicate that the team members do not favor the new leader. Even his new speeches are not welcomed. Erickson's first task after taking office is assigned to Vago's team. In Vago's perspective, this seems like a simple escort mission to repair some damn communication station. However, Master Chief recalls the Covenant soldiers lurking in the sanctuary, who had already sabotaged the communication station there. Having a bad feeling about it, Master Chief specifically warns Vago not to take it lightly. For this matter, Master Chief even approaches Erickson, questioning why he didn't inform Vago's team about the potential Covenant risk in the mission. Erickson confidently states that he has read all of Master Chief's reports and counters with a question about how Master Chief managed to escape from the encirclement of dozens of new Covenant soldiers, including a commanding elite. Without explanation, Master Chief simply mentions that the enemy just disappeared. Erickson believes that Dr. Halsey and Cortana's influence still has residual effects on Master Chief. Before Master Chief confesses everything, Erickson refuses to assign any combat missions to Silver Team. For Master Chief, this is a lack of trust and something he cannot accept because Silver Team is born for combat. However, inside the departing elevator, Master Chief receives the trust he deserves. 
As a scapegoat for Dr. Halsey, the High Commander was furious, but highly valued the situation described by Master Chief. He even entrusts Master Chief with the investigation. When Master Chief inquires about what he will gain from this, the High Commander only replies with trust. In addition to the above, Soren falls victim to a scheme in this episode. He is arrested on charges of piracy, extortion, and treason. Before diving into the second episode, let's recap the story of the first episode. The Spartan warriors welcomed a new project leader, Ericsson, but the unconventional methods of this new leader left all the soldiers, including Master Chief, speechless. They found themselves yearning for the leadership of Dr. Halsey, like never before. Now, they feel like they have been placed in a museum, unable to step onto a real battlefield. However, the concerns of Gunnery Sergeant about the Cobalt team, dispatched by Ericsson, materialized. Master Chief immediately approached Ericsson to inquire about what happened to Cobalt team, while questioning whether they were alive or dead. Ericsson casually responded that Spartan warriors don't die. Master Chief expressed his intention to go find Cobalt team, even prepared for insubordination if necessary, which displeased Ericsson. He wanted Master Chief to understand who is in charge. Despite the frustration, Ericsson disclosed the latest intelligence regarding the suspicious New Covenant infiltration reported by Master Chief. It was deemed credible, but lacked conclusive evidence. Master Chief suggested questioning Perez, the Shepherd, and the only survivor to get more information. Ericsson had already talked to Perez, but she couldn't confirm Master Chief's account as she had lost the relevant memories. Regarding the truth behind the deaths of Team B members, Ericsson remained doubtful. He considered the possibility that they might have perished due to the new Mombasa warship's attack. In his view, the situation was questionable, but he couldn't confirm a definite connection with the Covenant. Master Chief found the situation absurd, but felt helpless. To him, without Spartan warriors, the Alliance could not achieve victory in the war. Ericsson shared this perspective, but believed that the Alliance needed a leader, not necessarily the person inside the armor. John, to Master Chief, all these words sounded like a bunch of nonsense. He later found Perez, and from his perspective, everything she said was a lie. From Perez's attitude, it was evident that the Master Chief's judgment was correct. Perez told him that during the judgment scan, she heard a voice and could clearly sense something nearby. However, she couldn't explain what it was or why her teammates died while she survived. She was the sole survivor, just lucky to make it through, and couldn't be considered a hero. Because she couldn't provide clear answers, she chose to remain silent. But to the Master Chief, this was valuable intelligence. He comforted the panicked Perez, assuring her that even the most painful things would gradually fade with time. Through cross-referencing, the Master Chief finally located Cobalt Team's mission location. He led Silver Team to provide support. The mission objectives were twofold. Retrieve Cobalt Team and eliminate any Covenant encountered. Simultaneously, they had to disrupt and support the establishment of a new knife base. They encountered Covenant attacks during the mission. Dr. Halsey, unseen for a long time, finally appeared in this episode. She was captured by Axon, and through Cortana, Axon obtained confidential information about Dr. Halsey. Cortana, placed on an independent server, conducted multiple calculations, and determined a 97% likelihood of a certain event happening. Judging from Axon's expression, it wasn't good news, and might involve the future of humanity.